<clears throat> Hi, Dr. Despanoy, gastroenterologist. There have been many queries on my YouTube channel to ask about intestinal dysplasia. <clears throat> to the surprise to many people, actually in Singapore, we are one of the best uh, centers that have studied this subject of intestinal metaplasia. So uh, people nowadays are very clever. They ask me very clever questions. So I will answer you back with a clever answer. <clears throat> So let's look at it. Okay, this paper was published in uh, <coughs> in this journal. Uh, I think it's GUT. <coughs> okay, yeah, it's, it's, it's called GUT. GUT is one of the best journals in UK on digestive diseases. And the author of this journal is, the lead author is called Professor Yu Kei-Guan. Kei-Guan is the former dean of medicine. Uh, Kei-Guan is my mentor, uh, not last time. And also even now, I consult him when I need help. <laughs> okay, so k is the one of the best researchers in the world to study gastric cancer. And what k has done is to get a large grant and follow about 3,000 patients uh, uh, and scope, uh, that, scope them, scope the stomach and do a biopsy of the stomach on a regular basis over five years. This is called the GSEP studies. Um, from that, they pick up some early gastric cancer. Uh, they pick up 21 gastric cancer. So this is one of the good study that proved that in people having a risk factor for liver cancer, in this case, in this case, intestinal metaplasia. If someone had intestinal metaplasia and is aged more than 50 years, as in this study, they are at risk of getting gastric cancer. In fact, from this study, k group uh, estimated that uh, about uh, people that have intestinal metaplasia have a six times higher risk than those that had no intestinal dysplasia to get stomach cancer. So remember six times, if you have intestinal dysplasia, the risk of stomach cancer in you is six times that of people that do not have the intestinal dysplasia. So in this study, they pick up actually 21 early gastric cancer. Early gastric cancer means it's uh, limited within the lining, the mucosa of the cancer, it hasn't spread. And all these cat patients, I think they all survive. All undergoing uh, surgery, uh, endoscopic resection, they all survive. And none of them develop metastasis or spread. The take-home message is, if someone with intestinal dysplasia, uh, they are at risk of getting stomach cancer, if you survey them regularly, in this particular case, k scoped them two years later, and I think five years later. Oh, sorry, they scope them at year three and year five, so two scope. They pick up early gastric cancer. So if we scope them on a regular basis every two to three years, we are very likely to be able to pick up early gastric cancer before they have spread. So this is the one of the most important message from this study. So some patient come and ask me, Dr. Why I have intestinal dysplasia, should I be worried? I say, well, we don't have to worry because the Absolute risk of cancer, say 2,000 patients, about 3,000 patients, 21 having early gastric cancer after five years is not a huge number, but the number is more than zero. And we know that I am in terms of menopausia, had a six times risk of stomach cancer, but we also know that if we survey them every two or three years with gastroscope, we can pick them up early and they can be treated and they will not have spread. So this is an important message to you. Now, this paper was published in many years ago in 2022. They have been publishing results from this study because they have tons of material to uh, evaluate. And now this is a second paper that they just published and it was actually highlighted in the Straits Times. So what they what we have been doing now is that for people at risk of stomach cancer, like people that are older, people that have H. pylori infection, either before or current, people that smoke, people that are overweight, they may have a higher risk of stomach cancer. And if on the scope we did detect what we call intestinal metaplasia, then we should scope them regularly. But what studies show is that among those that had early gastric cancer, if you look into the data on the biopsy and do genetic testing, k and the group found that they have certain specific mutations that are associated with developing into early gastric cancer. So all these studies, I don't think uh, you'll be interested or you understand, they find that there's a series of mutations uh, that are, when you are present, they are associated with progression to early gastric cancer. So k group was proposing that maybe eventually we can have this type of system. When they have intestinal metaplasia, at the moment we told patients to come back for scope every two to three years to make sure that they don't progress. But perhaps if k group can continue to pursue and they, they may be able to develop a genetic testing that if you have intestinal metaplasia, we test you for this series of genetic mutation. If you don't have the mutation, 
low risk. Maybe next crop, no need three, four, three to three years. Next crop for surveillance, five years. If you have this series of mutation, high risk, then we better scope you earlier, scope you every two years. Of course, and in many studies, this is just an exploratory study. The first, uh, I think one of the first in the world that show that if you have this series of mutation, you have a high risk of st uh, stomach cancer. We need closer monitoring. If you don't have this mutation, you are less likely to develop liver cancer, uh, stomach cancer. We don't need to scope you every two, three years. But this is still the beginning. I think a lot of work needs to be done. To sum up, uh, what Kagan's group has shown is number one, if someone had intestinal dysplasia, risk of cancer is higher. Number two, if we scope them every two to three years regularly, we are very likely going to pick up early stomach cancer and prevent death. We are able to prevent, pick them up before they spread. And number three, uh, we, Kagan went one step deeper. Instead of scoping everybody every two to three years, maybe we can derive a genetic testing that if the patient had this series of mutation, then instead of two to three years, we scope them earlier, maybe every two years. And if they do not have this high risk mutation, maybe we can scope them every five years longer. So this is a story up to here. K1 and the group are still publishing. We wait for more data from them. And as a Singaporean, we should be proud that uh, uh, the Singapore Gastric Cancer Consortium, led by Pritchard and K1, able to produce good research paper. This is Dr. Desmond Mike.